Hello, I am Marianne Franzisi, founder and CEO of Spark Elementary School in Lindenhurst, New York, where we are working towards creating an education for an inspired life. And today we are launching our first episode of Call to the Principal's Table! Yay! Yay! Okay, we have some representatives from Spark with us. I actually also have the honored role of being these children's principal. And every day, many, many students are called to my table. Parents are called to my table. Faculty is called to the table. And our table at school has what on it, Rylan? What is on the principal's table? Do you remember? No. Do you remember? What's on the principal's table, yeah. Eli? Those. The L's? No. A giant heart. Okay. Because the way we solve problems is through the heart to heart. So let me introduce who right. I have with me today. I have Eli from fifth grade. Eli Jacob McGrath. Thank you. I have Rylan from second grade who's in my office. A lot hear? or a little? You a, lot. <laughs> a lot. Do you think they can hear us? Katie who is yep. representing okay. our kindergartners. We also have Samantha representing the third grade band with their own homemade instruments. Give us a drum roll. Yay. And we have my amazing assistant, the Ed McMahon to my Johnny Carson, <laughs> the Andy to my Ellen, the Chewy to, what's her name again? But <laughs> here she is, Miss Mendez, or also known as Mendez! Yay! Okay. okay. Now, you didn't, you so, to do the elves. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly how these elves got here, so I am going to look towards Mendez huh. and find out mm -hmm. what is going on with these elves. Don't test your mic. Principal Marion, they have been very bad. Leave it. I Wait, caught them how bad? in the office this morning playing with our photocopy machine. Again. And Wait. I have proof. Okay. What? Wait, what? Look at this. <laughs> Elves God. in the copy machine of a school that's trying to go green and not waste paper. Oh, what? sorry, that was mine. Mendez, are you in the copy machine too? <laughs> <laughs> I am okay. so God, angry that right. these elves, I think I'm seeing red. <laughs> ah. Elves, you have caused quite a problem yeah. at our school. Yeah, you did. Let's okay. hear from our youngest, Katie. This is our talking stick. Only Katie's talking. She's got the talking got stick. So Katie, how do you feel about these elves? I feel Great. mad. You're mad? Yeah. What is making you so yeah. mad? Because once the elves, like one night, they pulled off my blanket. <gasps> You pulled off Katie's blanket? I don't think it was Snowflake Naughty. Or dragonfly. No, snowflake dragonfly. Dragonfly. Did it scare you in the middle of the night? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, okay. that's that's really mischievous. Okay. That's a problem. It, I agree. It was all elf. All elf. It was all the yes. elf. No, it was all elf. It was your yeah. elf. Yeah. So they're part of the same okay. family of elf on the shelf. And I think very nice. I think the only exception to this oh, rule. Do you have the talking stick? Sorry. Here you go, Eli. Tell us, Dang. what do you feel about these elves on the shelf in school? They're horrible. Why? Um, yeah, they, they did a copy thing and they wrote it in blood. They did. How do you feel about them? in school do they make you a little nervous or weirded out well the only real one that does it is figgy iggy but but snowflake make me but snowflake and dragonfly also make me feel uncomfortable so uncomfortable what what are they doing okay. that's making you feel uncomfortable they're spying on us oh you feel like they're watching you yeah anybody else here ever get that feeling like they're just Spying on you. Mm -hmm. 
I am uncomfortable. Thank you, Eli. Now, Rylan, he had one okay. of the biggest problems. Okay. Rylan, what happened with you with the elf? How did they make you feel? Katie, yes. you, found, you like the microphone? Yes. I love it. It's made me feel sad. Yes. yes, and how did your sad come okay. out? What did you do? Kick. Who did you kick? Seth. How'd you do that? What? How did it Got come it. out? Were you... I don't know. So, okay, so you were feeling a little sad about that, but when you saw them in your room, did you feel worried about yes. them? Yes. You were worried. Yep. And what were you worried they were going to do? Move. They were going to fly around. During the day? During the day. Mm -hmm. They're going to just start flying about. And if they started flying about, what would have happened to you? Woof. Woof is what? What would you do? Gone. Gone? Got it. You would have left the building? I would have been out of there. Okay. Uh, give us a uh, definitely a tambourine for that or something. Woof. Was it that scary? Gone. 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 So. Okay. Rylan, what plan did we have to come up for you with you to deal with the elves? Touch them once in the morning when I come in. And what happens when you touch them? They lose their magic. But they, they, they didn't lose it today. Well, this is the weirdest thing. Today, they just showed up on this studio table. Got it. So I'm thinking that they needed to be called to the principal's table because I Daddy. haven't had a talking with them. So, mm. dear Snowflake, Daddy. and what's the other one's name? Dragonfly. 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 Oh, my turn. I have the sticky like. Okay. Miss Mendez, okay. compose an email to the North Pole. On it. Dear North, North Pole. Okay. okay. From Spark okay. Elementary. Okay. <laughs> you like to hear your voices, mm. right? Mm. But listen. I'm trying to get mm. this email to the North Pole, so no disruption, Eli and Katie. Ryland's doing great. Drum roll. Here we go. Dear North Pole, okay. we are here to inform you at Spark that our elves are not allowed to report anything negative that our students are doing. We do not tattletale at Spark about bad behavior. We try to solve the problems. So please feel free to report any of their wonderful, kind, and loving deeds that they do every single day. Everybody's working hard here for that. And if the elves continue to waste paper and not be kind to our earth, we are going to have to send them to our environmental club. So with that said, little elves, we are happy to have you at our school. Do not waste paper. We are a green school and only report the good stuff. How's that, everybody? Good. Uh, so do you think the problem yes. is solved? Good. Are you feeling any better about it, Katie? Got it. Anything you want to say to the elves now that we've got them on the table? Uh, tell your friend elf <laughs> to not pull off my blanket. Would you do that for us? Okay, message received. Rylan, anything you need to say to the elves? Please stop wasting paper. It's you, you have to recycle. And remember, we will touch you once a day so you don't fly around because I don't want Rylan. Get what? It. Out of the building. Yep, or right. kicking people because right he's afraid so. of the elves. <gasps> oh, he just yep. moved. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Careful. Eli, any last word to the elf? Nighty night. And what are you doing with my marker? Ah! Into the basket. Let's give a little bells for Christmas. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Well done, boys and girls. Bye so, Miss Mendez, who is next Yay. to the table? Your fifth graders requested a meeting with you. Fifth graders? What fifth did they graders. request a meeting about? They wouldn't tell me. They said it was top secret. Uh-oh. All right, yeah. let's clear the table. We are going to send... Remember, you wanted to be on the ELF segment. Yeah, Eli. okay. So, anyone who is sitting in these chairs, let's go backstage okay. to Bob. Okay. Off you go. Miss Mendez, if you could lead them out. Bye -bye. And try not to talk into your mics. That way, that way, that way, that way, everybody. 
Thank Bye. you, Sparkers. <laughs> Miss Mendez no. will help you, Katie. And while we are waiting for our next group to get mic'd up, no, Sammy, it's me and you. I think we got to make some Christmas music. <gasps> Off with the red glasses, I am no longer angry. So let's hear some jingle jangle, maybe play your guitar, and we'll see if I can make up a Christmas song while we're waiting. Do you know, spark the little children sing. We're a school with lots of bling. We do all creative stuff, but I wouldn't say it's fluff. We try to do our best to grow our minds and bodies and souls. I don't know, Katie. What do you think? <laughs> uh, not Katie, Sammy. Sammy, why do I do that to you? Why do I continually call Sammy Katie? It's such a problem. But. I love that is the rain stick. So, okay, let's talk a little bit more while they're getting mic'd up about what is this idea of a heart to heart. So, one of the main missions for us here at Spark is really to empower children to know themselves. And one of the best ways to know yourself is by the mistakes you make. So anyone who comes to my office I don't want them to feel like it's suffering or punishment. I want them to feel like it's a growth opportunity. It's an opportunity to look carefully with an adult who cares about them, about the mistakes they're making, the choices they're making, and to come up with a plan of how we can really make it different. So. What happened with the elves actually was just that. Rylan was having such anxiety about the elves being in his room. And that is not uncommon. Many, many children feel very nervous about the elves. And he kept trying to touch it. And the other students were freaking out about it. Because if you touch an elf, they lose their magic. So when he came to the table, we really got to how scared he was that they would just start flying around, be out of his control. And he really knew if that happened, he would lose control and just want to run away. So we came up with the plan that he would get to touch the elf one touch in the morning. We worked it out with the North Pole where the magic would just be gone for 12 hours. And then at night, the elves could go do their thing. And for Rylan, that helped him to tolerate it. So we came up with this middle ground, this place where he can feel safe, but at the same time tolerate the elf, take care of himself, and honor the rule of one touch, and then that's it. So that's the result of this kind of heart to heart. Now, again, I don't use the term heart to heart lightly. Because when a child comes and sits across from me, I listen with my heart. And what that means, I listen with a spirit of curiosity. I am completely curious about what they're bringing, what, what feelings they're bringing to the table. And I listen very actively to hear their story, to hear their struggle, to let them express the complexities of all the feelings that they're feeling. And I validate it based on who they are, what they're going through, where they are on the life cycle. They're young people. And we then align to make the plan. It's really not about making deals. It's about making change. It's about recognizing challenges and using their strengths and the strength of a supportive adult, supportive teachers, supportive staff to get them to where they go next. That is exactly at the heart of what it means to truly honor a child and their difficulties because under any difficult behavior is a need that they're trying to get met in a faulty way. And we do need to prepare them for the world, for being able to express their needs and to be able to get them met in a way that they won't get in trouble. 
that they will be able to be heard and that they will start to become creative in the problem solving, in finding plan B or C or D or adjusting the outcomes of what is really their life story. Okay, let's see how our fifth graders are doing. Mendez, are the fifth graders mic'd? I got a thumbs up. Welcome fifth graders. <laughs> Sitting next to me, Madeline Kelly. Hello, Madeline. Sitting next to me, Hello. Hayden George. Sitting in front of my computer, Aiden Rodriguez. And sitting over by the band, Matthew Malafante. So, welcome fifth graders. These are four of our fifth graders who are on the set today. I honestly don't know what they're bringing to the table, like Miss Mendez said. So I will put on my blue glasses of curiosity. I'm very curious to hear what brings you to the table. Madeline, would you like to start us off? Our case is kindness doesn't solve everything. <gasps> What? How dare you? I think you picked up the wrong glass. Kindness doesn't solve everything. Are you sure about that? Yes, it doesn't solve everything. <laughs> Where have I gone wrong? You're my fifth graders after all that empathy training, all those acts of kindness. <laughs> You believe, you have come to the conclusion that kindness does not solve every problem. Yes. <sighs> Why? Um, <clears throat> well, I feel like kindness doesn't solve everything only because if you, if there's a certain problem, we were in music class, yeah. as you guys know. Me and my friend were fighting. Yes. What were you fighting about? Just something. We don't remember. Honestly. We don't remember. It, you were having like a verbal argument? argument? Yes. And you were hurting each other's feelings by what you were Liam saying? Was hurt. The person was hurting. You're allowed. He, was, he would have liked to be here anyway. So okay. Liam was hurting your feelings? Liam was hurting my feelings and he just was hurting it and hurting it and hurting it. And I tried to ignore him, but he just kept doing it. Did he realize what he was doing was hurtful? Yes. And what it, was your response? I just ignore him. You were ignoring him. Mm -hmm. But somehow, that yeah. led to this idea that kindness doesn't solve all problems. Yes. So keep going, Kaden. And then <coughs> the music teacher, as she said, okay, you can't, when you go into the world, world there's gonna be people you don't like, but you still have to be nice to them. And we understand that, but then she's like, yes, kindness has to solve everything. Kindness has to do this. I was saying kindness just can't solve everything. Because when you go into real, the world, if you go into the real world, if you go into public schools, if you go into this, it's not like the school, it's not gonna solve everything like they say it is going to. Wow, so what I'm hearing is, that part of being a fifth grader at our school, because our school just goes to fifth grade, is that you're thinking about what comes next. And you're thinking about going into junior high school. And you're thinking that if you approach everything with kindness, that might not work out too well yeah. for you. I'm hearing that. Yeah, Matthew, that's what do you want to add? As the music teacher was talking, she kept saying about how kind, how you all have to be kind, and th so that problems don't start. And then I, and then it sparked me that this isn't right, and that the kindness just won't fix everything. But the teach, that the music teacher won't listen. So and that's why it's our don't music start. teacher who is the, one of the kindest yes. angels on earth, right, Miss Alex? She really does believe that kindness can solve everything. And as she wasn't backing down from that, she was holding ground and saying, no, nope, yeah. if you meet people with kindness, things will change. And you were feeling like, no, no there's no. an exception. Sorry, like the Let me kid. hear from Aiden. Aiden is one of our best listeners. He's a quiet kind of guy. 
and so you must have been observing the whole thing, Aiden, right? I can't yeah. imagine you jumping into the argument. Yeah. <laughs> you were watching. Yeah. So from your observation, what did you see happening there, and what were you thinking? So the music teacher was like, they were talking to Liam and Maddie, and they said, just keep being kind and kind, don't fight. Okay. And, and I don't think that's right, though. Okay. So you say you don't think that's right. What would be right? The right thing is to bring in the principal Mary and Fable like we're doing today mm -hmm. and talk it out. Can I ask you this to all of you? Do you think that kindness means you don't get angry? No. Because kind, yes. you can be, yes, that's yes. what I was thinking. Tell me more about that. I feel like, because I feel like when kindness is, it's always a, oh, well, you have to be nice. You have to do this. You cannot, you cannot get angry. You cannot get that, but under your skin, you kind of have to be nice. Yes. So kindness and nice, I'm saying are two different things. Because I think you can be kind and strong. Mm -hmm. Kind and angry. Kind and firm about what is a yes for you and what is a no for you. What do you think of that? What do you think I'm saying about that, Matthew? What does that mean? It you makes can be sense. Con Tell me, have because you ever seen anybody be kind and angry at the same time? Sometimes when you're just mad, you. It's, you don't, you sometimes just don't yell at the person, but you try to say it in the nicest way, but being firm. Okay. Has anybody here ever been able to be angry and kind at the same time? Yeah, I've been mad at somebody, and then I've, you know, I'm not gonna, it's one of those times where, like, you know, it's the, that, yes, they will not be kind. They'll try to get under your skin, they'll be this, but my, it's like, if you let everybody who tries to get under your skin, get under your skin, that's just going to happen forever and ever and Every ever. Every time. Nothing's going to happen and nothing's going to happen. Well, what Hayden's talking about is taking back your power. Yeah, you have to take back your power to get... But you can do that in a nice yeah. way yes. without getting into a and fight or anything. Ah, keyword. This is what I think. I think that it's not so much about kindness or not. I think maybe it has to do with violence. Mm -hmm. And don't... violence can come in physical form or in words. So if Liam's bothering you and you punch him in the nose, no, nobody would that's do that violent, school. right? If he was bothering you and you called him a name, you're an idiot, you're this, you're that, that Which to me do. is violent. But to stand up and say, That's not okay. I don't appreciate that. Say it. Show Hear me hear it. That's not okay. I don't appreciate that. Can you stop? That is kind. And power. Strong. Kindness with power. There are many times. Now, Matthew, you know you've been brought to my table a couple of times. And I've been angry with you, right? Have I ever been unkind to you? No. No. So what Never. was the difference? Why is it no? Why You're definitely didn't... kind, but you can be firm. Kind and firm. So I think maybe that's what we've got to change it to. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, I'm going to ask you Hayden because you've got a strong opinion on this. Do you feel like all problems can be solved without violence? Can all problems be solved peacefully? Mm -hmm. That's it, a question. I feel like yes and no. Because yes there's some no. more, cause like if somebody, if you are getting beat up, you cannot just, no, that is not okay, that's not going to happen. You do have to fight. If you have defend to yourself. defend yourself, yes. you have to defend yourself. And then there's, if you're in a verbal argument, you don't go up and punch him. Right. There's, a, there's two different, there's so two different what things. Kind of, that's what yeah. I'm trying to say. There's, it depends what kind of circumstance you're in. Okay, and you feel like if your life is being threatened, then you have to use oh, yes. force. Oh, yes, 100%. Aiden, or, you're shaking your head. What do you think about that? Because if somebody walks up to you and says, oh, you're ugly, it, you don't punch them in the face. What would you do instead? I would, 
Like, ignore it. Ignore it. And what would you say inside your head? That I want him to take that back. So you might be able to say that out loud, too. But he might not take it back. He might not. Yeah. He might not. That's but then life. the other thing is, uh, would you take on the words and think, maybe I am ugly? No. no. Why not? Aiden, Aiden took Let's the see positive. Because I feel like everybody's different and they deserve to be like that. Yeah, that everybody looks different. And honestly, what is... <laughs> ugly mean anyway, right? Yeah. Honestly, what I does would. that mean? I would. You would pass it to Aiden. So I if would. someone said it to you, you would it would get stuck in your head, the negative thought? I wouldn't get, it would be like, yeah, maybe I am ugly, and then I'll think about it another, and then I'll just forget about it. But then it's like, usually if somebody does it to you, I say it in my head, okay, I'm ugly, He's not, he doesn't look better than me, bye, walk away, next. Yeah. It's a... It's kind of like I feel like it's that I've I have parents who have kind of dealt with that, so I feel like that kind of rubs off on me. They've taught me that uh, mm -hmm. somebody calls you this, or somebody calls you that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, they're no better than you. Walk away. Next class. Well, what Hayden is talking about, which boys and girls, this is going to be very important when you move on to middle school. People will say negative things. Sometimes people yeah, just no don't doubt. think. We spend a lot of time at Spark being conscious about our words, mm -hmm. but it is the most human thing in the world. If someone was to say to you, you're ugly, you're dumb, you're too skinny, you're weird. Don't label. They label, yes, which I want to talk a little more about that. Kind, human, Brave. brave. Those are our labels. It's Spark label is kind, human, brave. But it's the most natural thing to think, maybe I am dumb. Maybe I am ugly. And if you get that thought stuck. Get it out. Can't. But get it out. How did Hayden get it out? He just told his, told his parents. Get another opinion. Go to people you trust. Go to people you trust. I know we'll you can you come know. to us anytime Bye. at school and say, remind me, am I dumb? Am I? And you go to Miss Rosalie, what would Miss Rosalie say to no. you? <laughs> what would she say? No You're beautiful. You're beautiful. What else would she say to you? Miss Rosalie is an awesome teacher. Aside. She is very positive. And she would be like, you need to be reminded that you're beautiful, smart, kind. Come to me. So get a second opinion. Or get like a psychiatrist to help you. I'll go to a therapist. You that's know, great. You know that I'm a therapist. Yeah, Did you knows. know that's my yeah. secret undercover job? Well, I feel like Other than you a newscaster. Can, a, and an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I wear my, I wore all my glasses? I did. No. Okay, Hayden has something important to say. Let's give us some music. A nice guitar beat in the background for Hayden as he talks this serious talk. Well, um, it depends. If you want to get a therapist, because if, unless you're getting, like, seriously bullied and picked on every day, if somebody says, oh, you're ugly, you can't go to Dr. Phil. Like you just... Oh, good, cool. Just, no, no, no. Hayden is saying you don't have to make every problem a giant problem. Yes, I love that. Extra. It does, every problem does not have to be extra. Yes. Love yes. that advice. Let's hear from this guy. <laughs> so you, Matthew, a lot of times when you get upset, right, you get something caught in your head, what do you do? You go silent, right? Have we all seen that in Matthew? Yes. Like a wall yeah. drops yes. and he won't talk to us. Yes. What happens there? I don't know. You just go to the silent place. You go to the table. And then he comes to the table. Principal Marion, here we are, back to that. I'm like, Matthew! <laughs> Talk to me! <laughs> That's not kind. It is kind.
crying because I'm doing it because I'm frustrated. No, you're doing it because you love him and you want to support him and you want to make it stronger. Now, Maddie is what we would call at Spark an empath. Yeah. She just did it right now. She is able to truly feel what other people feel mm -hmm. and what's underneath it. So emotionally intelligent. That was beautiful guitar playing, Sammy. <laughs> it was such good background, wasn't it? It was like, yeah, let's hear from Aiden one more time. Let's hear this. Aiden, what do you have to say about all this? Not really. Nothing? Anything. Nothing to add. So this kind of reminds me of when we were doing empathy training yeah. one day. We were working on the story of the three pigs. You remember that? No. So we were telling, you might not have been there, yeah. but we were looking at the story of the three pigs and we were talking about afterwards what the pigs must have felt when they were... Their houses being, were destructive. Yes, and the kids were coming up with things like terrified, remember that? Yeah. So sad, upset. And then we asked, what might the wolf be feeling? Happy. Matthew. Well, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in 20 years. Ex May I have a bit of pig to eat? Exactly. We came to this wolf is so hungry, he's desperate. And desperation makes you do crazy things. Yeah. Like blow down a house with your stinky yeah, breath. Yeah, totally. Your stinky and, breath. Right, and your stinky <laughs> breath. And we thought, does that make the wolf bad? No. Makes yes. him hungry. Yes. Are you bad that when you're hungry? Uh, well, there's uh, a difference between hungry and trying to eat somebody. <laughs> Get your food. There's a difference between So, hungry, but the yeah. littler kids in the room, I said to them, I asked them, so what should we do with that wolf? And they were like, maybe the pigs could invite the wolf in, make the wolf a nice sandwich. That would be so kind. If he's going to eat you, don't let him in. Ah, give him that stick. <laughs> give him the stick. If he's going to eat you, don't. Well, because what? if somebody carries a pig on their back, but you know they're going to hurt you. Oh, you can hurt me later after I have this nice bacon. That, no. That no. is you. exactly where kindness in that way you. does not work. Yeah. It works against you. So when you are sacrificing your own life, putting your Sorry. life at risk to be kind to someone else, Don't that's take not kind. That's stupid. <laughs> stupid. That is not good. That is risky. Unless it's the Titanic and you need to get off with your friends. The whole point <laughs> is you could understand the wolf and not call the wolf names and make him bad, mm -hmm. but you don't open the door and let the wolf in don't. because you want to be kind. Does that make sense? Yes. That's it's exactly scary. what Hayden was saying. It's actually very so that is true. the point of how kindness doesn't work when we sacrifice. Let me ask, does anyone have an example of a time when you thought you were just being kind and you did something that ended up being risky for yourself? No. I did. You did? I did a couple of times. What are you remembering? You learned. You got I've the lesson. Been, yeah, well, when I first came to the school, there's, there's, in this school, there's people who are nice, but I sometimes mean. they just get the wrong thing in their head. Yeah, like all kids. Yeah, yes, like all kids. And I'm not the type of person who if you get something wrong in your head, I'm not going to think of that right away. I'm thinking, you stay over there. I give them three ground rules. One, don't touch me. <laughs> Two, don't bother me. And three, if I'm serious, I'm serious. So don't even... Cross that line. That is me. called boundaries. Very healthy. Yes. <laughs> Not everyone respects our boundaries. Because a couple of, <laughs> there's been times where people have, the, the line's right there and people have stepped over the line. And I think there have yeah. been some times where you've stepped over the line, Hayden? Yes. Yes. Yeah, of course yeah. you did. You've been with us since, what, first grade, first second grade? grade? Yep, first, first So you first grade. crossed that line too. I've but crossed the line. But you haven't anymore, not recently. I feel I feel like but I feel like I am a little different only because once I cross the line, I know there's there's the line crossed. And then I don't and then I kind of do stop though. Because I've seen people with me, they've like this is a line and then they've went from like there. And yeah. Then that's where you need that's where if you cross the line you kind of need there's no excuse you need mm -hmm. to know. There's, like a, there's a line. 
Like, there's three things you don't just, there's like three things you just don't bring up in life. I think that might be something for another whole show, but I want to hear what your three things are. Race. Ah. Uh, go ahead. Parents. Parents. And then, I would say just life. Because you don't bring up, if somebody had like an accident in their life, lifestyle, like a, you don't bring that up. Well, because that's kind of, you know, I, I just want to really so let you know really that I heard very clearly a very important, strong statement you made, which is don't bring up race. Oh, yes, that's number one. That don't always has to be race. number one. Don't do that. And I feel that's like. Wrong. And listen, fifth graders, I'm going to invite you back to this table because I think we have to bring up race. Yeah. Here, we got to open that conversation because people feel uncomfortable talking about it. Yeah. They feel and really this uncomfortable. And school talked about it like in a negative way. way really so mm -hmm. can we put that on the agenda? Mendez, yes. race on the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank All you. All right. So, fifth graders, you were just awesome. We are coming to our last segment, which is we are bringing a parent to the table. Yes. So, Madeline, you can stay here, but boys, thank you. If you could move on. Thank you. Aiden. Bye, Aiden. Bye, Aiden. Then, um, Sammy, Sammy, also, bye. if you can go get mic'd up for our last section. Bye, boys. That was amazing. Oh, Maddie, while we're waiting for your mom is coming on the yes, show. and my two sisters. Your mom and two sisters. So Madeline's whole family is at the school and my dad. her mom is even working at the school. So it is the dream family, the Kellys. Madeline in fifth grade, Sammy in third grade, Katie in kindergarten. So cute. But while we're waiting for them, Maddie is up. Uh, and she is in our spark. We do the enrichment sparks yeah. for entrepreneurship. So Maddie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on? I'll put, actually, these are an example of entrepreneurship. My son Sage made these glasses. It's called Frame Me. There are no lenses in them. But what they do is give you a different kind of look. So if I wear these, I kind of look a little like a smarty pants. Maybe if I change my hairdo a little bit, I can really look fancy. There we go. So Madeline, I hear that you've opened a school store. Yes, with those people over there, my four friends. And how is that going? It's going good. Next week, we're opening a school store. What kinds of things do you have in the store? Zollipops. Zollipops? Did you order them? Yes, on Amazon. So is it hard, easy, setting up a school store? Very hard. Why? Because you have to get along with everybody. True. All about the people in entrepreneurship. You've yeah. got to keep your people working together. you got to keep the peace. you got to keep the peace. It's a lot about problem solving yeah. in business. What Our else? Our boss is Miss D. She is the teacher in charge. Mm -hmm. And she's a great math teacher, so perfect yes. for the finances. Yes. Excellent. And we have three managers. That is so good. What is your role? Manager. Are you creative manager? Because no. I know you make a lot of the products. Yes, I'm kind of like the creative manager and tech manager. And Hayden, who was sitting there before, um, he was a manager. And then Aiden. Mm. Matthew is inventory. Inventory. My friend Abigail is um, advertisement. Remember Eli from the Elf on the Shelf thing? He is, I forgot what he is. I forgot. Oh. So we'll get, I'm, I'm going to ask him later and we'll. Well, do you know that Spark is also a business? Yes. It's Spark. a school and a business. And so part of what has been so hard for me, Madeline, is learning how to be a businesswoman. <gasps> I, so I just went to school. I went to a special class on how to really run a business. I know how to work with kids. But actually running a business is yeah. very hard work. So our last guests are coming on the studio. Mendez, I would say I know Eli really wants to get back in time for club. So can you take the three boys back to school? 
clipboard back? Oh, yes. Come get your clipboard, Miss Mendez. You are the best. Thank you. Mendez, I, I, come over here. I want to go back for club. Can I go back for club? You really want to go back for club, too? We're going to be done um, in time for you to get back. We're just going to do a quick little interview with Mom. So there it goes. Here we have the Kelly girls. We've heard from Maddie, and we heard a little from Katie. And, and Sam is our band. She was our band. But what's so special about this, Sam is in engineering. And that's one of our sparks. They made all these instruments, Sam's, mm -hmm. right? Tell me about it. What did you have to do to make these instruments? First, we need to plan, like, what are we going to use to make them? So first, you're planning. Yeah. And then what do you do? Okay. And then we can create them. And then third, we can, like, test them out and see what needs to change and stuff. It looks like this is just kind of, like, materials you found yeah so it's all just found material and you made this guitar yes which we heard right we, this is what a rain stick yes we love it and this drum is like a whole contraption this is a tambourine yes so super one of the things that's really special about sam is she is our top engineer did you hear that yes Sam is the top engineer in the school, which means that you have a natural ability to get an idea of a design in your head and then build it. Did you know that about yourself before this year? No. And it's so important because, I don't know if you know this, Mom, but a lot of times people think that engineering belongs to boys. Okay. I've heard that. <laughs> and it is not. Girls have engineering minds, and there's no such thing as girl jobs or boy jobs. Right, Maddie? No. Anybody can be anything they want, but that is one of your special sparks. And these three girls and their mom are so special. I remember the day that Kara came to our school with mm -hmm. Maddie. Maddie is truly the student who brought us to the school brought your family to the school. I want them to see your face. So, Kara, do you remember that? Of course I do. Oh, <laughs> what happened that day? We walked into the school, I think, during Happiness Week. That's right. Which was, you can imagine, coming from a public school, and then we walked in there, and we didn't know what to expect, and we're walking through a curtain of rainbows. <laughs> oh, that's true. And Rainbow. Principal Marianne's like, hi, it's Happiness Week, and there was rainbow streamers <laughs> everywhere. And Principal Marianne said, it takes a lot of work to be happy for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> and Happiness is a practice, everybody. Everybody, we gotta practice it. <laughs> Work hard. And we met uh, Miss Rosalie, which is like, yeah. if you ever walk into the school and you run into these two women, they talk to you like they've oh. known you for their whole lives. Yes. Thank you. And immediately they had Madeline under their arms and put her in a classroom. That was when that was first grade. Yes. So she was sitting in on Miss Ross's classroom, and we just did a tour of the school, and they really understood our needs to have Madeline in a smaller class size mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with more um, emotional support. I think that was the biggest thing I because her right. self-esteem yeah. was so low. Wow. And Madeline, like I was telling you earlier, Madeline, you're such an empath, which means you feel yeah, things yeah. so deeply, right? Would you say so too, Katie? Yeah. yeah, you could see that in her. And also a creative, sensitive child. And for the creative, sensitive child, the, it's overwhelming to be in a big school. And I know that your first year, you found the work very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And you stuck with it. You cried your way through it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you came out the other side, and now you are really strong. Mm -hmm. And such a strong reader and writer, and yeah. your ideas are really getting out there. And it's, a, it's a, just such a beautiful example because seeing you grow too, Kara, as a mom, um, and really taking an obstacle in your family's life. Like when you have a child that is struggling or suffering and you feel helpless about it and you stick with it and find the right place and answers, then it's like the obstacle becomes your destiny. 
it really turned into it. We turned into a spark family is what happened. It started with Madeline in there because she really needed to be there. Yeah. We couldn't read mm -hmm. and that was alarming and I wasn't getting what I needed for her from the public school. And then they, the school said, do you want to help out at recess? And I stuck my foot in there and I said, sure. And then I ended up finding myself back on my career path through the school by becoming a, a reading specialist and getting certified uh, in uh, especially towards dyslexia. And we brought Katie there, because she was just in preschool, and yeah. we said, such a great preschool. It has Montessori, yeah. it has yeah. Reggio, yeah. which is a dramatic you play. everything, you are my ambassador. <laughs> and we saw how Madeline blossomed, and then there was Samantha, who was doing great in public school. But I love Samantha. we knew that she when we went for go. her parent-teacher conference in public school, they said, Samantha's great. She knows what she's doing. We don't have to worry about Samantha. We just stick her in the back. And that oh, was a big... No, lady. You need to be <laughs> on the front line. That was such a big warning bell for uh, John and I because yeah. we knew that Samantha could, yeah. it had so much potential to do so much more. And bringing her this year to the school, I... I agree that it was the one, that second, the like, best choice that we ever made because she has that opportunity to do the engineering and be creative. Mm -hmm. You yeah. really do, Sam. You've got a beautiful gift there. Samantha Blossom, just like Samantha, uh, Madeline Blossom, in, but in totally different ways. And I think that's really the key is like creating the environment for kids to blossom. but. It also speaks to you becoming a reading specialist, and now uh, we have Miss Kara in our school who works with the kids. Part of what we're looking for with people who work with our children are people who understand deeply the struggle that some children have. Because I truly think our mission yes. is to you make children feel really understood and cared about. So when you meet a child who's struggling, you know what that means. You saw it in your own child. You know what that parent is going through. And you're not just doing the Wilson books. You are doing the Wilson books well, plus doing, infusing your whole heart into it. And Right, and what Rosalie has brought, you know, what, what she brings to that part of the curriculum is just, it's, yeah. you can't find it anywhere else. But I always feel a connection with the parents that come into the school immediately because I'm like, that's me, that's us, that was Natalie. Yes. <laughs> I love that, were you just testing? <laughs> there it was. <laughs> so special. And I think that this is such a nice place so to cute. kind of end our show and I want you girls to just think about it for a second because Madeline, you expressed it before. What you represent as our family is really culture, the culture of Spark. Diff three different children from the same two parents, yes. but all original sparks, all on their own, and all with the <laughs> qualities. Maddie, what were those three qualities you said we should be labeled? Kind, brave, and human. Kind, brave, and human. What would you say is your strongest quality? Kind. Kind, I would agree. <laughs> How about you, Mom? What's your strongest? Ooh, I don't know. Down. Brave? I, yes, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you are so brave. She's okay. She looks perfect in them. I would say lately human has been my best quality. Go ahead. What's your strongest? Um, my strongest to be kind. Was there a time you've been kind in school, Katie? Yeah. When? Um... When the practice fire drill. Oh, during the practice fire yeah, drill. Yeah, like when we were coming in. Were you kind I to you the were children who were scared? scared? No, no, I was kind to Gabby, my friend. Oh, thank you so much for that. And let's hear from Samantha. <coughs> um, I think I'm human. And what does that mean to you, <laughs> human? <laughs> You're so human. <laughs> uh -huh. Such a compliment. You and I have a match here. <laughs> Most of the time, I just like being me. Oh! And I make mistakes sometimes. Right. Please, mistakes are okay. And you are just you. And you are all wonderful. Well, that concludes our first episode <laughs> of yes. Call oh, to the
and you two guys look painted from all the talk i think we killed the elves oh no what are we gonna do tell you until next time everybody be kind be brave be human